January the 2nd, year 2022. And our, our lesson is entitled, He Who Sits on the Throne. Amen. And the lesson's big idea is, I will worship the one God who sits on the throne. Amen. And our focus verse comes from the book of Revelation. Uh, 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 book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 1 through 3. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Come on. And in, in the midst of the streets of it, on either side of the river, was, uh, was there the tree of life, which bear twelve men of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of that of the tree were the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And he shall be, and, he, and there shall be no more, no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. Uh, now, uh, may we all stand for our responsive reading for our lesson text. Our lesson text comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, 1 through 5, and verses 21 through 6, and chapter 21, 22, verses 1 through 5. I'll read the first verse, we read the second, and we'll read the last verse in commentary. And it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And the trail of gates were twelve pearls, every several gate was for one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent gold. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the land is the life there. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's, oh, let's read that last one all together. Sorry. Oh, sorry. And the city. Oh, sorry. And the nation shall, and, the, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do it bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night day. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall be no wise enter into it, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are rich in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. And there, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in him, and he shall serve, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Be 
is all together. And there shall so be no night there, and me no tomorrow, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. You may be seated. It says throughout history, uh, our lesson connection is throughout history, people have have fought over the right to ascend to earthly thrones. They battle, play games, and engage in deception to win these seats of power. One of the most interesting wars for a throne occurred in the a, in a, in a Persian Empire. Daniel, the fifth chapter, provides us with vital background information for the account, for, uh, for this account by telling that telling the Persians defeated the Babylonians and set up a vast kingdom. King Cyprus, Cyprus the Great, ruled over the Persian Empire, and his son Cambyses succeeded him. However, the next succession proved more challenging. Although historians disagree on all the details, the following account, uh, the following account, preserves the key point. When Cambyses died, Darius rose to power and defeated other contenders for the throne. Throne, killing uh, Cyprus' son, Babius, despite their, despite their authority, uh, authority, lack of knowledge caused problems for the new king because many people in the empire did not know that Barbius had died. As a result, a pretender to the throne named Gamathus uh, uh, proclaimed that he was Babius. Gamathus was a magi like the wise men uh, or magi who visited Jesus, Jesus and his parents in the Gospel of uh, Matthew. Because Gabius looked like Babius, Babius, excuse me for these mispronouncing his name, the scam proved effective at first. Darius, however, killed him. A stone carving uh, known as the, uh, the Bashirism inscribed, uh, inscribed inscriptions featured Darius Trampling, trampling the imposter. After the death of Gamius, another man rose, proclaiming to be Barbius. After a short-lived short success, he died. And while Darius stepped out these con artists, many have argued that Darius himself lacked a legitimate claim to the throne. Ain't that how it is? And that he invented the story of a usurper, of the usurper Gamius. In heaven, in heaven, only one sits on the throne, uh, rega uh, regaining, uh, re re uh, reigning solely and unequivocally, unequivocally. While Satan once tried to achieve power, the Lord sent him early to earth like light to proclaim, to proclaim the Lord's uh, exclusive right to the throne. While politicians and world leaders battle over earthly thrones, we rest assured in our knowledge that Jesus sits on the throne of heaven. We owe, we owe the one true God our admiration, praise, and worship, for he is Lord of all. Minister Allen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me one more time? Ask the Lord to help us, Father. We're grateful, very thankful for the many blessings, God. Thankful, God, again, to be in, the pre pre in your presence, Lord, in the house of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing, God. We're asking you to help us, God. We know that we're just mere men, and we need the help of the Holy Ghost, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to do as you desire to do in this house. God, touch every single one of our hearts as we submit ourselves to your word today. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many of you glad to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. Amen. It is always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. I always give honor, amen, to our bishop. Appreciate and love him. Thank God for him and what he's doing. Amen. In our lives and the Lord. Praise God. Amen. America is a democratic state. Yes. Uh, the etymology of the word democracy or democratic uh, actually originates from the Greek word demo, 
which means people, and kratikos, which means rule. Amen. So America uh, is a place where the people rule. Amen. A government in which power and civic responsibilities are exercised by all adult citizens directly or through their freely elected rep representatives. The goal was equality, yeah. freedom of speech, and a fair trial, and perhaps tolerance. Yeah. Um, this is both a blessing and a curse. Yeah. A blessing, because it doesn't matter who you are, amen, you're no greater than the next man. Amen. A curse, because people in power are put in power, not because of character, but because of green paper. So money rules rather than morality. Amen. It's also a blessing because I have the right to speak my opinion. Amen. And what I believe, whether it is right or wrong. Right. He's God, but it's a curse because freedom of speech went from the freedom to speak opinions about religion and or government without the restraint of government to the freedom to express myself through immoral behaviors. Come on now. Immoral because the behaviors is in direct conflict with God's word. Yeah. Praise God. So in one sense, the American mindset places people on thrones. Yeah. yeah. Eliminating the truth of God's word in the American concept of putting people on the throne of their own lives. This affects how we approach the kingdom of God. Yeah. We have to be careful not to view the biblical principles through the lens of the American government the popular opinions of our society and or our modern uh, religious system or Christianity. Right. Yeah. The word of God stands in a class all by itself. Right. Praise God. While we understand basic biblical principles, we have to get this into who we are as the people of God. There is one throne in the kingdom of God. That's right. Hallelujah. And it's not ruled by the people. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. The governmental setup is not a democracy, but a theocracy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Our opinions matter very little in the kingdom of God. Come on. Amen. The blessing of, the king of this kingdom is it actually promotes and provides what our governmental structure has struggled to provide over the years. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There is equality in the kingdom of God. Come on now. That's right. Second Corinthians 8, and chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse number 14. Amen. And 15. But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, yeah. that there may be equality. Uh -huh. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had nothing lacked. Yeah. The early church had a system yeah. by which no one lacked anything. Amen. As we look at what happens when real unity comes into a place and revival breaks out and the spirit of giving gets a hold of a people. Acts chapter number 4 verses 30 through 2 through 35. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart yeah. and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things Come now. common. Amen. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them 
and brought the prices of them that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according to his need. Amen. We are really in this thing together. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And I don't know if we all really believe that, but that is biblically correct. Praise God. We are really in this thing together. Amen. There is room for patience. There is room for love. There is room for, amen, uh, equality and, and, and accepting one another. But there is not room to tolerate sin. Praise God. But we're all in this thing together. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. People that are power chasing, prestige chasing, or whatever they are playing with, the struggle of being born in America, not having completely brought into the concept of the kingdom of God. If I have it, so do you. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Scripture says he sits on the throne. He is God. He is also the Lamb. God has the right to govern the way he does. Yes, he does. He cannot help but to rule, amen, through love. Amen. Scripture gives us true meaning of love. Are you ready for the revelation of true meaning of love? God. Yeah, God is love. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The kingdom of God operates through and by love. This isn't sloppy agape. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. But it is the love that is established by God who rules both in heaven and in earth. Lord, help me today. Yeah. Now, now, you know as well as I know how difficult it would be to try to get an audience, amen, with the president. How many of you think you can just walk boldly in the White House and demand to speak to the president of the United States? Hallelujah. It ain't happening, is it? In fact, the chances of you doing this are quite slim. Amen. Amen. But, but aren't you thankful that we can have, amen, an audience with the king? Because God became the Lamb, you and I have access to come boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. The unique thing here is you actually have freedom of speech and don't have to worry about being made a spectacle because you haven't matured to the thinking of the king. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. What this king will do is take time to teach you the ways of the kingdom. Anybody, and then that's if you want to learn. Yeah. Praise God. I, I understand that we can frequent the house of God and not step anywhere near the king or the kingdom. Right. Just because you come into the house of God don't mean you're connected to the kingdom. Yeah, that's right. Amen. I know that when you're born again of the water and of the spirit, you enter into the kingdom yeah. and you can see the kingdom. Praise God. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you will actually participate in kingdom things. Right. Praise the Lord. You got to have a desire to press on. You got to have a desire to move beyond just entering in and get something more or get closely connected to the king. Come on. I don't want to just sit idly by in the church and just do a little bit thinking that I'm going to be okay. No. I want to please the king. I want to get Hallelujah. I want to be closely connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. I don't want to just, amen, be some spectacle or somebody just sitting on the sideline. I like being in the game. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Anybody want to be in the game? Yeah. Praise God. I want to participate. I want to help somebody score a touchdown. Hallelujah. I want to help somebody win the race. I want to help somebody. Praise God. Amen. So the Lord will help you. Amen. The Lord, the fact that, that he became the lamb, God gave you an understanding that, 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 that he understands that your struggle, be, that you and your struggles, because the Bible said, amen, the fact that he became the lamb mm -hmm. gave you an understanding that he understands you and your struggles. Yeah. Because the Bible says this, for as much 
Then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that he is, I say, the devil. Amen. At the, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Yeah. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in the things pertaining, pertaining to God. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted. He is able to secure them that are tempted. Yeah. Hebrews 4, amen, and 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast this profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Amen. This verse of scriptures comforts us, praise God. We relate better to people that have been there and done that, don't we? Hallelujah. I know when the Lord, when, when, when I connect to somebody, praise God, that they've been through similar things, amen. It's easier to make a connection because, amen, we've been there and done that, praise God. And although God knows everything, amen, the scripture made it, amen, uh, 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 acceptable acceptable for us to be able to say amen. He's not way out there. He became just like you and I. Amen. He knows what it feels like to hurt. He knows what it feels like to be amen pushed aside. He knows what it feels like to be amen rejected. He knows what it feels like to be broken. Praise God. Amen. And so he, he can relate to us and now we really have somebody we can really talk to. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Amen. And so they, they have similar, it's easy to connect to people that have similar scars. Yeah. People that understand you for some reason, amen, brings peace knowing that the possibility of being looked at sideways is thrown out of the building. Mm. Come on. <laughs> amen. God is not foreign to trials. As a man, he was unjustly tried. Well. People he healed and delivered. Amen. Anybody ever face any of this? You help somebody and they turn their back on you? Yeah. yeah. Treat you like you were the evil one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is not foreign to that. He's experienced that. Praise God. God is not foreign to temptation because as a man he overcame the temptation of fleshly gain, pride, and personal influence. Yeah. This is important. Because we have a high priest that has been through it and overcame it. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. And that is the beautiful thing about the kingdom of God. Yeah. Is the Lord will be what is necessary to bring people to the place of real victory in their life. Amen. Can I get an amen? Somebody. Hallelujah. God, amen, does not have split personalities. All right. Hallelujah. God, which is holy and pure, became the spotless sacrifice to do what? To redeem us. Is this making sense here this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Understanding this revelation would change your life. The one that sits on the throne. Is Alpha, the yes. first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega, the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Yes. He who sits on the throne is Alpha and Omega. Yeah. Everything starts and stops with God. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. The religious world, as well as our culture, doesn't want you to view everything through the lens of there is only one supreme deity. Right. That is so true. A multiplicity of gods is nothing more than twisted or bent theology. Right. It is watered down teaching at its core. Praise God. Amen. It is perversion. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, it is. Changing, this is what scripture says, changing the glory of an incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Yeah. A God that fits their opinion rather than a revealed understanding of scripture. Yeah. So, it's no wonder people are running around thinking of themselves more highly than they are. Uh -huh. They really don't have the revelation that there is no other God besides him. Mm -hmm. Is this all right? Yeah. Isaiah 41 and 4. This is talking about the one who sits on the throne. Right? Yeah. Isaiah 41 and 4 says, Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am He. Yes. Revelation 21 and 6. And He said unto him, me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, yes. the beginning and the end. I will give unto Him that is a thirst of the foundation of the water of life freely. Isaiah 44 and 6. Anybody thankful for the oneness doctrine? Amen. Amen. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Right. This is why you have people sacrificing their souls at the altar of homosexuality, uh -huh. the altar of sports, yeah. the altar of cosmetics, because they think it could bring about some kind of deliverance or acceptance. Amen. But I must reiterate that there is one who sits on the throne yeah. and he is the first and the last. Amen. Amen. Would you clap your hands into the Lord? Amen. Keeping, keep, keep trusting in the things, keep trusting in the things that man has deified and presented to you that these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. Come on, preacher. Yes. Come on, preacher. One day we'll stand. My brother Sean was telling me this morning he was talking to somebody before he, I, I guess even some Jehovah's Witness was telling him about something. If you ain't a part of the 144, you ain't making it. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> my grandmother was a strong Jehovah's Witness. Uh, she still goes into the closet uh, and, and do her time in prayer. Uh, she don't. Once they get rid of you, they get rid of you, though. I don't know what she done or yeah. what she saw. Yeah. Once they get rid of you, yeah. you done. Praise God. Hurt, Amen. And uh, he, he, the guy, Brother Sean, told him. He said, "One of these days, we'll see whether or not uh, it just uh, if, if it's just for the 144 or not." We'll see. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, we will. It's true. One of these days, we'll see it, right? Amen. We'll see whether or not it's just for the 144. Amen. Even as a thug and a nutcase out there, I did still believe there was a heaven and a hell. Yeah. Amen. I didn't just align. I just didn't align my life with it. Come on. Amen. But I did believe that there is a heaven because one of these days, Amen. We're gonna meet the one that sits on a throne. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bottom line. One of these days, we're all going to meet the one who sits on the throne. So make no mistake. You, you when we meet him, though, we're not going to find a triune uh, a throne in heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's not going to be three thrones up there. It's going to be one. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. We know there's only one who sits on the throne, don't we? Because the Bible says this, and immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, 
a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Amen. Anybody thankful for the one that sat on the throne? Praise God. The Bible refers to temples many times. Amen. The Old Testament church went from tents to temple. Amen. The Lord said we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. One statement his followers and hearers misunderstood was when the Lord said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Amen. They thought he was talking about an actual place. Amen. Not only was he referring to getting up out of the grave, but he was pointing to a city. Praise God. Where John said, he is the lamb is the light. Amen. The Lord God Almighty and the lamb. Anybody thankful that he is the temple? Praise God. Amen. The Bible says that the lamb is the light. I'm almost done. I, uh, I'm almost done. Light in its simplest form That's right. is the absence of darkness. Yeah. Mm. Okay. In its simplest form. Jesus said what? That he was the light, the light of the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Here's, here's what we can say also about light. Light is a primary tool for perceiving the world and communicating in it. Yeah. Amen. Psalms 119 and 130 says this, the entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Praise God. The right perspective of life comes from a proper understanding of the light of the world. Amen. People, though, they kind of like operating in darkness because what? Their deeds are evil. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Science says this, that darkness can make you uh, more prone to lie and to cheat. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that is the truth. <laughs> uh, they, they've done many types of experiments, and uh, you, you go back and look at a whole lot of stuff. The, the, the internet is both a blessing and a curse, yeah. amen, because there is a lot of information and some of it is not true, but, but you can uh, uh, find some good information in there, amen, uh, you just got to know the resources, praise God, to pull from, yeah. but, but you can go back and you can uh, look at some things where they've done experiments of putting people in a cave. Amen. Of course, you don't have no lights in a cave. In fact, we went to a cave in uh, in the Roanoke Valley in, in, in Virginia area. Amen. And uh, it, it was a nice little place. We went all the way down in that cave. It was pretty nice. Amen. And uh, uh, the guy got ready to, 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 to blow out the candles and turn the, the flashlights off. And I was thankful that he put the flashlight in my hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, but the longer you sit there, he said people uh, were left in that cave. Amen. And they actually lost their mind. Praise God. Amen. And some studies have, have shown that, that, that after you've been there a while, you start talking to yourself. You start seeing stuff. You start doing stuff. Amen. All of a sudden, things just begin to slip away from you. Yeah. Amen. You, you, you can see what rabbits running across water. Yeah. Start hallucinating. You don't even need drugs, praise God. Amen. This is why I can't understand why people are turning lights out in church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. That's good. If, if, it, if it's causing people to move into a place, because light affects your body. Light affects you. Amen. So That's when you good. turn the light on, it actually sends signals to you. It tells you that it's time to start moving around. It's time to get up. There is an internal clock that's connected to the light. Don't you that's think that good. happened on purpose? Praise God. Come on, Amen. Come. That's why when the Lord begins to speak the word of God, something light. begins mm. to happen to our spirit, mm. our soul, because light now is being released. Yes. Thank God for a man of God that will begin to preach and teach the word, the unadulterated word of God, because he turned Mm. He turns the light on. Praise yeah, God. That's good. Hallelujah. Bishop walked in here and said, Woo! Thank God for the sun today. Hallelujah. What? He was thanking God for the light. Hallelujah. Because not only did the sun give some light, but it sent out a little bit of energy, a little heat, kind of warmed it up. 
little bit. And that's what the preaching, the teaching of the word to those that will receive it. It will turn the light on in your soul. It will begin to sing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. That make any kind of sense here today. Man, light sends signals to wake you up, to wake your physical body up. Preaching and teaching the word of God will shine the light. And guess what else it will do? It will expose the sin in our lives. Yeah. 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 This is why the truth cannot be watered down. Amen. If Jesus is the light and the Bible also tells us he is the way and the truth, we must preach and teach the pure, unadulterated word because that is what brings light. Yes, it is. In order for us to effectively walk in light, somebody has to turn the light on. Amen. I'm looking forward to somebody turning the light on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody's got to turn the light on. And when you turn the light on, amen, if you get honest with yourself, amen, and not allow the darkness to control you, amen, you'll really make a break to the altar. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The preacher turns on the light. We must learn to view our world. Listen, we must learn to view our world through the lens of the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And not view the word through the concepts and the ideas. This happens all too, too yes. much. Yes, come on. Of the world. Of the world. Yeah. Politics. Politics. Everything. Everything has got to be viewed through this book. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. This is the only way you're going to get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Mm. All right. First mm -hmm. John 1, 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him, we walk in darkness. And we lie. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not the truth. Mm. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Yeah. That the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. Amen. I mean, I mean you want to keep your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I mean, if you really want to keep your name, yeah. I see your hand. If you really want to keep your name in the Lamb's yes. Book of Life. Amen. We'll walk in the light. Right. Yeah. Amen. If we want to keep our name in the, in, in, uh, in the, in the Book of Life, we have to flee useful lust. Yeah. Amen. Here is a sure way to keep your name in the book of life. Are you ready for it? Serve God holy. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Serve God holy. Amen. Praise God. You cannot believe the lie once saved, always saved. If we defile ourselves, act abominably, or, or create lies and never repent, we will find ourselves uh -huh. blotted yeah. out of the book mm. of life. Mm. From Revelation 3 and 5, he that overcometh, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen. The real truth is, before anything compels us to go deeper in God, Something has first got to compel us to pursue God. Right. Amen. Amen. I want God more than anything. Mm -hmm. And I do understand that there is only one God. Amen. And I'm thankful that that one God is sitting on the throne. Anybody thankful for that today? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful that that one God. Moses, he saw a light. And that light drew him. To the revelation of God. Yeah. Amen. When you see a light, you got to turn aside. Put down the darkness. Amen. God will use a myriad of things to get your attention. Yes, he will. Amen. Yes, and, he will. And, and, and one thing you will never be able to say, amen, if hell becomes your habitation, one thing you will never be able to say is God didn't reach it. He did not read. No, you will never come on now. Say, yeah. God loved us enough yeah. that every day we got up, come there was mercy. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And if we spend if we spend eternity in hell, Amen. It's going to be because we made that conscious decision 
to reject the reality that once we get to heaven, we'll see his face. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Amen. That's real, folks. That's this real. Ain't no fairy tale. Mm -mm. Amen. And I'm looking forward. Amen. I hope I said something here today. Yes. Uh, praise God. Amen. Would you just uh, lift your hands to the Lord for just a moment? God, we love you. Thank you. God, we thank you. Yeah. yeah. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that uh, the truth actually reveals to us, it lights up the room. Yep. Praise God. gives us truth to actually live by. Yeah. Truth to treat people right. Amen. There are people who are forever learning ah, say never come to the knowledge of truth. Mm -hmm. Come on, preacher. Amen. And that's folks in the seminary. That's right. Study the word of God. Never come to the knowledge of truth. Praise God. Each and every one of us to come to the knowledge of truth and give us understanding because the way we receive Christ, it was a light that shined. Amen. A light that shined. Amen. While we were living in darkness. Let's thank the Lord for that light. Thank you, Jesus, for that light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I shared this conversation with my grandson this morning. I said, you know what? Thank God for 
truth. Yeah. Amen. God does not want us to see ourselves as victims. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Truth in itself can elevate you. Yes, it can. That's right. Above. That's right. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said over years and years ago, I even say it now. Be careful how you see yourself. Mm. Thank you. 